Today, we're on the coast of Southern California, and that amazing body of water is the Pacific Ocean. Now, would it even be more spectacular if that body of water can be transformed into clean drinking water for the whole entire world? Well, water is the great reset button, but there are communities all over the globe where resetting just isn't an option. So today, we rise to win the water crisis. Welcome to The Rise Effect. I'm Corey. And I'm Timmy. I moved out to California from the East Coast. I came to LA from Hawaii. The goal was to be a star. So I ended up in Hollywood. For 15 years, I warmed up crowds on American Idol, dancing with the stars, and even spent the last decade touring the world as a DJ. I started as a dancer and performed for artists like Aaliyah, Missy Elliott, and Will Smith. I then authored three books and became a pastor. But through it all, something was missing. I felt this desire to be a part of something real. A movement that would change communities. To tell stories of strength built on people's passions. Driven by their courage and giving the world hope. So we've come together to celebrate unsung heroes from around the world. This is The Rise Effect. I am cruising in Dana Point, California, one of the most beautiful places for surfing, volleyball, bike riding, or just soaking in some vitamin D. I'm gonna catch up with my boy Corey and our Rise Effect guest today, and we're gonna dive deep into a discussion about the water crisis. So now I see why you're always so happy when I see you outside of this. This is like your little, like, this is your man cave right here. <laughs> this place is awesome. And you know, I mean, you can't beat the weather. It's like here, right now, this is why people want to be in California. Pretty much. Yeah. And it's... what they're going to miss if they move. Yeah. So well, we're not moving. <laughs> we're not moving. Timmy's coming in right now. Timmy, over here, bud. Yeah. Come on in. What's going you... on, fellas? How'd your bike ride go? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah? I could have done that all day. How are those quads? <laughs> Work those quads. It's burning. It's burning. Like it's a cruiser. So man. I could, yeah. I could, you got to manage the pace that I needed for my physical condition. Ryan, how Timmy, are you? Ryan, Ryan, Great. Timmy. Right on, Timmy. Great yeah, to awesome. meet you. I heard you are the man when it comes to water talk. Well, I'm trying. You're trying? <laughs> I think you're doing. He's, more, you're he's more than trying. He's I mean, this wow. is like a Nobel Peace winner in the making we're <laughs> yeah. just hanging out with right now. But man, it's so good that you could hang with us. We're so happy to have you here because I love your rise effect and I really think that the world needs to hear about what's going on. So, um, so we're thrilled to have you on the show. Thanks yeah. for hanging out with us. So, so, honored to be with you guys. Tell us, uh, where did this passion begin? Well, it, it was born out of pain, actually. In 2010, I went through a terrible uh, divorce. I was wrapping up graduate school for my master's degree, and I started to think, okay, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do? And um, I had had it as a goal to ride, ride my bicycle, sort of as an accomplishment for graduating that part of my life. And so. Um, I decided to ride across Canada with a friend of mine, and wow. we started on, like on across Canada. That's not like, hey, I'm gonna drive drive yeah, the next a little bike over. ride. <laughs> so, and how many miles is that total ride? Uh, across Canada was six thousand two hundred and seventy. Wow. wow. Yeah. And so it took us ninety-seven days. So, a friend of mine said, "Hey, you should leverage some of this um, attention that you're getting on your Facebook posts for mm. something bigger than your ride." I said, "That sounds like a great idea." what should I do? And he's, he's like, well, I, I know this NGO in San Diego and they um, are doing point of use water systems for uh, villages that have like diphtheria and leptospirosis yeah. and yeah. some and diarrhea caused by uh, bacteria in water. I said, awesome. I, yeah. I was just like reeling yeah. from life. Like he could have told me anything. Yeah. And yeah. he told me that. I was like, awesome. So that day I called my bicycle ride, uh, ride for water. So as the days go on, um, I started to learn more about it. I actually became really interested. I, mm. I uh, had born and raised here in California. I've surfed, knew nothing about uh, water problems. Yeah. So that was like my introduction, kind of just a friend who made a comment to right. me in the middle of like a, this terrible part <laughs> of my life. And I became really uh, interested the more and more we went on. Yeah. And so he, he then challenged me, hey, would you help to 
try to raise some money for this project that we're working on in Fiji. Mm. And I said, uh, sure. I don't know what that means. And I made a couple posts and I, I remember being at a Chipotle in Columbus and a friend of mine said, this is awesome what you're doing. And I wanna, um, I wanna send you $20,000 to, to help with this. Wow. I was like, what? I felt like I had tapped into this thing that I could help with, yeah. you know. And I got to San Diego and I rode with another friend. I, we ended up riding down to, down to Columbia. And, wow. and the whole ride turned into a year journey, Whew. raising funds. And when I completed the ride, I then went with that NGO and partnered with the, with the Fijian government. Mm. And we put these systems in 136 homes and wow. in two villages. And uh, it was really an amazing experience. Uh, it really started to like, you know, give me a lot of meaning and a lot of like purpose. Like I yeah. felt like my life was meant something. So you knew nothing and you knew nothing about this when it started. No. So when you're on this journey, when you're biking for nearly a year or over a year, is that when you're starting to like research and get all this information on like these are the systems we can put together, you're reaching out to people? How how does it go from I know I don't really know about water except for I like to surf it to we're gonna go to Fiji and put these water systems in. Like where's the research happen? Does it happen on the road or Yeah, so after uh, after that project in Fiji, I decided, wow, I'm really interested in this. So I decided to go do a, a, a doctorate in public health mm -hmm. and um, with an emphasis in water policy. So I spent, I then spent the next five years uh, learning. This whole world had started to open up for mm -hmm. me. And then my, my aha moment, it really came in, I want to say, uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, wait a second, you know, I've been... I've been surfing in my in the ocean my entire life. Like that's the answer. Like, mm. We need to figure out how to help people get that for free. The next year, through a random set of events, uh, I was asked to go to El Salvador to help a teacher with the same point of use systems I had used in Fiji. Okay. And so I had a, uh, a guys kind of group that I was a part of. And so uh, there were like 25 guys coming, wow. to, coming to this uh, Bible study we would have. And I said, hey, I met this lady and she wants us to go come, to come to El Salvador. Who, who wants to go? And uh, four months later, uh, 35 of us got on an on a airplane and we took uh, 22 board bags, 30 surfboards. Wow. We rented this house, and we ended we ended up going to this place uh, called Palmercito. Okay. And we worked with with our friend, and we put these filters in. And then after three years of doing that, I started to think long term, and I and and then I went back to that thought that I had had, like, well, we really need to develop something that yeah. uh, that can help people get water out of the ocean. The only problem was we couldn't find anyone that had done that. Mm. And so we said, well, let, well, we'll do it. Since that first trip to El Salvador, we've taken uh, 15 trips there. Wow. Always the same group of people. And uh, last year we found a, a company in, in Palo Alto in, in Silicon Valley that makes a system that we're able to use. Wow. And, and awesome. there's only about 20 of them. And, and this system, which checks in as two pieces of luggage on a commercial flight powered by solar will will we'll turn That's 360 crazy. gallons a day of ocean water into clean uh, drinking water uh, through renewable energy. Wow. So it's using solar power yeah. to power it, yeah. and it's pulling 360 gallons out of the ocean, turning it into drinking water Yeah, and every we, day. And, and we funded it, we funded wow. it, we paid for it, we installed it, we did it all ourselves. Really, it's it's an exciting time to realize that for the first time we actually have the technology and we actually have the platform to be able to do this. Yeah. And and um, I think one of the reasons I've been asked to uh, that I've been asked to be a part of larger academic conversations or scientific conversations or research conversations is because you know from their perspective, the holy grail is sort of wait you can privately finance and distribute water for free. Mm. And I have on record a UN delegate at the United Nations and the leading researcher at MIT for graphene saying, we need to be doing what you're doing. 
The other advantage is economic. You know, when when you when people finance these large scale projects, that they're forced to commoditize water, mm. and uh, that's one way of doing it. Yeah, building a system, charging customers rates, or you can privately fund systems and distribute it for free. I'll let people decide where they want to land on that, but I know where I want to land, and I want to land on let's let's privately fund these systems and, and make sure that a fundamental human right, 2010 water was recognized as a fundamental human right of the United Nations. It's the only, mm. it's the only makeup of our body that's also recognized as a fundamental human right. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. why philosophically I land at a price point of zero. Mm. And I feel like um, yeah. we're appealing to the better nature of people to, to join us in that. So. So you're telling me this is privately funded. How can someone join in on your cause, join in on your rise? Can you explain how that, how that works? Because I think that you're reaching the world and so many people need to be involved with what you're doing. Yeah, there's a few different ways. We've had companies buy uh, a water system for Indonesia where we're going to in March. They can do that as a corporate tax write-off. People go on trips with us for those who want that tangible experience of actually going. But really, the bread and butter of everything we do, we generate our entire budget through uh, subscriptions. And so subscriptions. people can donate a cup of coffee a month, it's $5 a month. They can donate like a Netflix subscription, $12 a month. We have a couple other options on. And that's really our passion is a broad grassroots, uh, a lot of people involved in a small, tangible way to help us make a big difference. So if people would like to help with that, they can go to www.oceanwater.com. That's O-C-N-W-T-R.com. And we really would love for you to get involved with us in any way that's on your heart. We would love it. I want to thank Ryan for sharing his rise effect on our show. But we're not done yet. So is this the point in the show when I tell you I really don't know how to swim? <laughs> Time to teach Corey to shred. Yes, yes. Oh I, my God. I thought we were talking about like cleaning the water and drinking purified water. I'm going to drink salt water right now. This is I'm part of the you. process. It's, it's for you to be able to taste the water and see yes. how yeah. much of a transition listen, it has listen. to be taken. Salt water, clean water, I have water, many excuses water. following go. this. Listen, Kevin Costner, enjoy dry <laughs> land. Enjoy dry land. We're going in, all right? We're going in. Oh gosh, let's do let's this. Let's do it, man. I'll have a cup of coffee waiting for you. Yeah, I can't wait. Extra hot, please.